Hi, my fellow YouTubians. Um, today is Wednesday, and uh, I have just four days left in my vacation. Uh, I'm not looking forward to going back to work, um, but I've had a lot of fun um, doing the um, uh, various uh, video blogs uh, over the past uh, couple and a half weeks. Um, so it's been great. It's been great. And as it happens just today, uh, I saw my last uh, film in the consecutive contest, which is the classic 80s frat comedy or college comedy, Revenge of the Nerds. Um, and uh, I enjoyed this movie. Uh, it was fun seeing uh, a lot of the uh, actors in it uh, from back in the day, guys like Anthony Edwards, John Goodman, Timothy Busfield, uh, and so on. Um, but uh, I don't really um, uh, think that it was uh, really uh, the best choice for this contest, unfortunately. Uh, it's kind of slow-paced. Um, and uh, the gags and jokes kind of come one at a time, uh, very uh, not 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 uh, not exactly rapid fire. Um, so sitting through this movie uh, a second time uh, was something of a challenge, um, or at least it would have been if I didn't have a special option on my DVD player to play it at a higher rate of speed with sound, which means I could watch the entire movie in just an hour and ten minutes, um, and it was it was more fun that way actually. Um, the uh, movie itself, of course, is about uh, a bunch of uh, social misfits uh, of various stripes um, who get kicked out of the freshman dorm when one of the, uh, the um, Alpha Beta house is burned to the ground in a uh, drunken accident. Um, <laughs> and the, uh, the Alpha Betas take over the freshman dorm and kick them all out, so they have to find a new place to stay. But it isn't enough for them to simply find their own place. They have to be beaten down at every turn. And so they decide to strike back, get revenge. I believe that um, the title is something like a riff on Return of the Jedi because it was originally called Revenge of the Jedi, the third in the original Star Wars prequels. I mean, Star Wars classic trilogy. Um, and this is um, supported by the fact that the uh, studio 20th Century Fox uh, <laughs> shuts down its logo early. And during the opening fanfare, you see Revenge of the Nerds in uh, titles that resemble Stonehenge or something like that. Um, in any case, um, there's a lot of cheating and underhanded uh, uh, game playing going on. They pull pranks on each other um, and uh, it all comes down to some sort of carnival competition involving um, pies, <laughs> which aren't really pies. They're just basically dishes of whipped cream with a surprise at the bottom and uh, a race, which the nerds cheat at. Uh, and um, a, uh, uh, a, there was also some sort of talent competition at the end involving a song and dance number. And actually, the nerds and their um, uh, 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 partnered sorority house um, come up with a very, very uh, sort of classic 80s number involving lots of synthesizers uh, and rapping. And ultimately, I'd have to say I liked the uh, Alpha Beta's uh, musical number better because those jocks, those uh, uh, jerks of football players, actually had the stones to dress up in cheerleader outfits and wigs and makeup to put on a good show. And they did. They actually um, did a, a better show than the nerds. But uh, <coughs> uh, apparently, um, the um, script uh, ordained uh, the nerds to win that particular competition. Um, so. All in all, I wasn't crazy about this movie. There's some fun stuff in it. I have to say that the guy that I liked best in this movie um, was, uh, let me see if I can just find him here, a guy by the name of uh, Bernie Casey, who played UN Jefferson. He was the uh, head of the national uh, organization for the um, fraternity that the nerds joined. Uh, he's just sort of kind of uh, <laughs> a uh, um, matter of fact kind of guy, very sort of understated. Everyone kind of overacts in this movie except for him. You know, once they accept them into the organization, they're like, great, you know, we're going to have the best Lambda house in the whole, uh, try Lambda house in the whole country, man. You, we're going to have a party and you should come to see how great we are. Great. Oh, yeah, and we're not going to discriminate or nothing. All of our pledges are going to be from all stripes, you know, uh, different races, different creeds, orientations. Wonderful. You know, it was just totally underplayed it. So that was fun. Uh, and like I said, I liked seeing all those uh, actors from back in the day, especially Michelle Mayrink, who played um, another sort of nerdy girl in uh, Real Genius, a movie that I liked quite a lot. Um, so while I enjoyed the movie, while I enjoyed all these movies to various degrees, I have to give the award uh, for the best consecutive screening to uh, Cadillac Records, which actually I enjoyed more on its second time. And that person who uh, submitted the title is goes by the handle of Eyewitness 911 here on YouTube. 
So, Mr. Eyewitness 911, you are my prize winner. Um, you uh, get to determine the subject of one of my upcoming videos. So send me a message and let me know what you'd like your prize video to be on. But the contest is not over yet. Not yet. <clears throat> Sherlock Holmes. Okay? Eden Lake. Mm -hmm. And Harry Brown. I'm submitting these three titles here. These were entries uh, that I did not pick uh, originally. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to watch one of these movies, not twice in a row, but one of them. And what I would like you to do is to leave a text comment and vote on which film you would like me to see and review for an upcoming video. And whichever uh, movie gets the most votes, not only will I um, review that uh, particular movie, but I'll also give the person who submitted the title a prize video of their own. Yay! Awesome! Uh, so, um, I've been kind of falling behind with my little uh, year retrospectives, if you're interested in such things. So I wanted to uh, get on that. Um, I'm up to 2002 and 2003, and this, of course, these were the years that the uh, second and third Lord of the Rings movies came out. Spider-Man, the first Spider-Man movie came out in 2002. The first Pirates of the Caribbean movie came out in 2003. And there were some other movies that won Oscars uh, and, uh, and, and such. Um, but uh, we won't get into that. Instead, I would like to talk about Solaris, which is um, a uh, film by Steven Soderbergh. George Clooney plays a psychiatrist or a therapist who travels to the moon of Solaris to find out what has gone wrong with their mission. It's one of my favorite Soderbergh movies. Uh, I just generally like him a lot, but that's a really good one. Uh, kind of low-key sci-fi movie, uh, not a lot of effects or battle sequences, certainly no you know, green slimy aliens, but uh, a very good movie nonetheless. Roger Dodger is a drama by a guy named Dylan Kidd, um, and this is uh, involving uh, Campbell Scott, one of my favorite actors, uh, who is um, kind of a, an ad executive. He works for Isabella Rossellini and his nephew basically is hanging around with him for the weekend and they get themselves into all kinds of trouble. Campbell Scott's sort of a, a desperate character, not really uh, all that happy, miserable as a matter of fact, but he takes the opportunity to show uh, his little uh, cousin around who's like, I don't know, 16 or so, 17 maybe, and uh, show him what the nightlife and what grown men do in the city and everything like that. And of course, it's, it's all rather pathetic. Super Troopers is a movie that I'm sure a lot of you know. Uh, it's a really, really, really fun movie. It's by the Broken Lizard guys. It was directed by Jay Chandrasekhar, who's one of the uh, members of the troupe, but of course they're all in the movie as state highway patrol guys who just like to mess around with motorists. And they get into sort of a competition with the local cops um, <laughs> uh, for uh, drug busts and things like that. It's a wacky comedy, but very well written and lots of fun. It's the first movie I'd seen by those guys, so uh, I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, Monsters Ball is technically a 2001 movie. Halle Berry won Best Actress that year, but it didn't come out uh, here in Chicago until February of 2002, so I consider it that year, and it's a terrific movie. Mark Forrester directed, of course. Halle Berry, um, uh, Bill Thornton, uh, Sean Combs, uh, um, Heath Ledger are all in this movie. Uh, it's really good. And my favorite movie that year, of course, and one of my favorite movies of the decade was Eat Tu Mama Tambien, which is a Mexican road trip movie directed by Alfonso Cuaron which is quite good. In 2003, my top five were The Magdalene Sisters. Uh, that is directed by an actor named Peter Mullen, who has been in a number of uh, Mike Ficus films. It's about um, a, not really a, 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 an orphanage, but it's a home for girls that have been rejected uh, by their families for being naughty in some way or shape or form. One of the girls, well, well some of them, they get pregnant uh, unintentionally, and since they're not married, they get shipped away uh, so where they won't embarrass the family. But some of them just sort of misbehave in rather uh, subtle ways, or at least they're perceived to be misbehaved. Anyway, they're all sent to this um, home that's run by nuns, where they're forced to do backbreaking work and lots of laundry every single day, and they just hate it there. And so they, you know, some of them attempt to rebel and escape over the course of the movie. It's a pretty powerful film. I like it quite a bit. Um, also that year, Finding Nemo, of course, the Pixar film, a terrific movie. I'm sure you know all about that. I don't have to explain what that is. Um, my number three pick of that year was Confessions of a Dangerous Mind, which is uh, directed by George Clooney. It's the first f film that he directed, and he went on to do, of course, Good Night and Good Luck. Um, it stars Sam Rockwell as Chuck Barris, the host of The Gong Show. And uh, according to the film and his unauthorized biography, a part-time CIA assassin, uh, it's a really fun movie, very visually stylish, and I'm looking forward to seeing a lot more George Clooney, Clooney films that he directs in the future. He's also in it, Julia Roberts, Demi, uh, uh, Drew Barrymore, uh, really fun movie. Um, 
The Pianist was also came out uh, early 2003. Um, of course, Roman Polanski won Best Director the previous year uh, because it qualified for that year. Again, it's the whole technical thing. But I saw it in 2003, and I liked it quite a bit. Adrian Brody, of course, uh, is the uh, dude, um, <laughs> the, uh, the pianist of the title, a Polish pianist who um, does everything that possible to avoid being captured by Germans and Nazis and lives basically in abandoned buildings uh, throughout uh, Poland uh, for as long as he can until it's safe for him to uh, come out of hiding. Uh, it's a really good movie. Um, and of course, my favorite movie of 2003 was um, a long-awaited return. It had been six years since Quentin Tarantino had made a film, but in 2003, Kill Bill Volume 1 came out, and man, was it a blast. What a fun movie. You know, I mean, you know, obviously there's not a whole lot of plot here, but the whole movie is just like this one big long tribute to the kinds of genres that Tarantino loves uh, more than anything. And you, you can just feel it. You can just feel the energy and enthusiasm. All the acting is great. Sonny Chiba and Lucy Liu are fantastic. All the fight scenes are amazing. Just, you know, all the different parts, the whole animated sequence involving Lucy Liu when she was younger is, is, is incredible. Um, yeah, this came very close to making my uh, top uh, movies of the decade, my top 10. Uh, didn't quite get there. That's largely due to the, uh, the plot, the lack of plot, really. Um, but so much fun. So very much fun. Um, so, um, yeah, that's it for now. Um, and uh, like I said, the consecutive contest is now oh, almost over. But please do leave a text comment and vote for which of those three movies uh, you'd like to see. Again, they're Sherlock Holmes, Eden Lake, and Harry Brown with Michael Caine. Sherlock Holmes, of course, being the young Robert, uh, Robert Downey Jr. and Jude Law version that's directed by Guy Ritchie. And Eden Lake is some sort of thriller. I think it's Australian or possibly British. But it sounds interesting. They sound like really good, fun movies and fast-paced, too. Or at least uh, sinister. And that's always good, especially when you've got something like Lady to Rest. That's very sinister. It's good to see. Um, so... Thanks very much for watching. Sorry I rambled a bit. See you next time.